Hello everybody, today I'm going to be looking at the Spitfire Audio BBC Symphony Orchestra update 1.2 and we'll be writing a little bit of music with some of the new instruments and the new and improved legato and things like that. So if you're interested in acquiring BBC Symphony Orchestra core or professional, watch this because you'll get a good idea of what it's like to use in pro in in in, in whatever you call it. <laughs> And if you've already got the library, uh, then I'll show you some of the <clears throat> really cool features in the new update. And it's really, you know, everybody just needs to push that button and download the update because it's great. Okay, so, rah. right. What are you getting in this um, epic update? Uh, f well, mostly it's free. So it's like a free gift just at the most depressing possible time of the year. I mean, you look outside and it's pouring with rain, it's cold and it's dark and it's horrible and it's, ah, we're all locked down. And then... Paul and Christian come along and say, here, have a gift. Have some free muted brass. Really? Yeah. Muted brass is a big one. Um, some longs, some shorts, uh, all the major instruments in there. So you've suddenly got this extra layer of colour, which you can add to your orchestration. And it's, I love muted brass. I think it's greatly underestimated and it sounds really great. And secondly, what you get is, um, a, well, there's a couple of new instruments like chimbasso, but... Secondly, the most important thing you get is a, what they call extended legato. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to put posh headphones on. Well, not posh headphones. I'm going to put... There you go. Proper headphones on rather than just my little kind of um, in-ear things because I really want to be able to hear every last nuance of this uh, new update. So look, here is BBC Symphony of course, Orchestra. Here are the violins. Here's the legato. So here's the legato. Very nice. Right, you get a, a new fast version. So if you want to do runs, this is now a pretty good way of doing runs. It sounds... There, I moved that, I did that without moving my lips. Um, if you also want to combine uh, legato with little bits of short slow... Those are the two big things with the legatos. The whole legato script is made better. Uh, I don't know if they've extended the range, but anyway, look. This is, this is what you're getting. You're getting fast stuff, short stuff, and better legatos. Thanks very much. Right, what else are you getting? You're getting, um, here we go. Let's uh, open up one of these brass things. Uh, tenor trombone. I love tenor trombone. Some of my best friends are tenor trombones. Um, here we go. So this is Long's muted and... Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Right, so you know, if, if you just wanted to see the sounds and know all that, you could watch. Um, hello, it's Paul Thompson here from Spitfire. You know, Mr. Mellifluous. Hasn't he got a nice voice? Anyway, look, you could listen to Paul's go, th go through that, which is better. But what we're going to do is all together a bit more, oh, what's it like in practice? That's what you want to know. And if that's the kind of thing you want to know all the time, and you're new here, can I encourage you to subscribe? It is completely free. We have a special offer. Push the button, push the bell. It doesn't cost you anything. And you get notified when we do stuff like this. So, Right, okay, let's get into this. I'm gonna write you something very, very, very quick. Okay, this is a... Um, uh, hang on, let me just get my... Uh, you see, you, it's funny. When you get a bit of kit, like this thing here, down here, uh, which is a stream deck, all of a sudden, before you know it, you are completely and utterly reliant on it. It's just a... It's, you can put key switches from here onto here, and uh, it just... You just kind of go, yeah. So I go and... Ah, it doesn't it's not plugged in or whatever and I'll do anyway look right right we're now going to do this let's get into this right so I don't know what we're going to do I literally have no idea what's about to come out which is alarming because it might be utter bilge Oh, 
Okay. Uh, not bilge. Not bilge. Uh. Oh, that's quantized it into triplets, which is not so good. I'm going to quantize it. Okay. You can use tractor, but you will notice it all sounds a bit late. That's absolutely normal. All samples do that because the note actually starts before it kind of reaches its peak. So then you either use track delay or you just slightly offset it by a tiny little tick. I'm using, uh, I'm moving it by 128th. I'll go with that. Okay. Let's. Uh... Okay, here's the uh, clarinet legato, which is very clarinetty and quite legato, and I think sounds rather nice. Okay, so what we've got going on in this is uh, harmonically. Um, that's what the viola is doing, isn't it? So it's basically going. It's a C minor uh, chord with an A flat on the top. So it's then the second half. It changes to B E flat A flat, which is an A flat minor chord, a chromatic mediant, and that's a topic I am going to return to because you asked me to. Right, where was I? Okay, so we're now going to. So the main theme is going. Uh, now, so it's on eight, so we're going to try and do something which is, uh, what are we doing? There's space here. Let's go there. Actually, this isn't the best place to start. The reason being, um, the uh, clarinet is an alto instrument, very much like the um, uh, violin, uh, the viola. So, so let's go to the flute and see how that does. Okay, that'll do. I, I like that. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, going. So rather than going the C minor with an A flat on the top, I'm going. I'm going down from the top. Let's see if I can make it fit. A flat minor. Okay, that works. Now we're going to try and put that. Uh... Oh, we've got to come up with the tune eventually, aren't we? Oh, silly, silly, silly. Is there a bottom C on an, uh, on a B flat clarinet? No, obviously not. Okay, so far so good. What's the cello doing? Could be that. Could be that. It, <laughs> it could not be that. sort of works. Right, let's now get into these um, muted brass. I don't want everything in the same place. So I'm going down 
if I play it there, it's going to fight with those that viola. Um, uh, I'm going to put it down an octave. I'm going to go. But we've got the clarinet, which is filling there. So maybe I'll do a first inversion. Let's see how that rings. Okay, bass trombone. Again, all these are straight mutes. Uh, which is a real, it, so it's an, a lovely sound because it, it does color the sound, but in, it's not a harmony, it's not a kind of cut mute or one of those more extreme mutes. It's in a more subtle way. So when you're using it as part of an orchestration, it just it not only makes it a bit kind of more nasally, but it makes it sit down into the arrangement a bit better. So let's see what that's going to sound like. Okay, so far so good. Um, how about uh, timpani? Okay, uh, that'll do. Um, this has come together all right, actually. I mean, it's not, it's not going anywhere, but... Okay, How, oh, look, we've got the French horn here. This is a... Wah! Don't call the lawyers. I almost played John Williams stuff again. And the algorithm on this YouTube thing is getting better and better at finding things like that. <laughs> Don't do it, guy! Okay, this is legato extended. For four horns. Now look. Um, I know quite a lot of you uh, would really prefer to avoid changing articulation if you possibly can. And this patch definitely makes it easier not to do that. However, I would encourage you... you you know, if you want it to sound great, you've got to use all these articulations they give you. You know, it, that is different too. And, you know, good as this is, it's not the same. So, you know, we're going to use this one patch. Does sound good though, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. What's uh, what is my tune? I don't know, something like that. No, that wasn't what you played. Do you know what? <laughs> that wasn't that awful at all. Okay, we've got trumpet. Let's see what happens here. Wait, don't bring it all in at once. That's where I'm going to bring it in. There. Add a bit of colour, bit of emphasis, bit of extra whatever. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, now. You may have noticed in this brief piece of composition, I have so far ignored the violins. They're all sitting there, all being paid, reading copies of the Daily Mirror, whatever else violinists read, and it's time to get them going. Shall we try and get a sort of run going? Oh, maybe that's not the best idea. Well, you couldn't really hear it in there, but it, uh, well, you sort of could. Actually, let's listen to it. Then we'll use violin two, which we never normally would for the... You would use the... You'd, if you were writing this for real people, you put uh, the uh, runs on violin two and then you save violin one to come in and double the tune because it's going higher and it's more important sort of thing anyway here we go so get ready violins here we go not in that octave though that octave ain't gonna work because it's the same uh, as the uh, thingy bobs, um, as the trumpet. Oh, it's a bit high, a bit screechy. Um, right, I could faff with this. Where are we going to bring in the basses? Um, Conventional wisdom has it that you double your celli with the basses an octave below. Ah, uh, yeah, so it's a bit boring, isn't it? I mean, so, and actually, when you get to the point in, the, in a little track like this, <laughs> um, oh, I've put sun cream on quicker than... Uh, uh, you know, look, a piece of music which takes about the same time to write as it does to put on sun cream properly... It's only ever going to be a little sketch, so that's pretty much where we are. So look, but when we get to the point where we bring in the uh, currently violin twos playing that top octave, that's where we're going to because we're going to we're going to broaden the arrangement so it gets a bit more thwack. Ready? Okay, it's done. That's it. Um, so look, um, what are we getting here? We're getting an awful lot of uh, orchestra, extra orchestra for our money. Um, there's a lot in here which you couldn't have done with the verse version, not least because the muted brass didn't exist. I haven't used the chimbasso, uh, which is a big <laughs> sort of... <laughs> look. So, ladies and gentlemen, I look, so what have we got? We've got... Um, significantly improved uh, legatos which allow you to do the fast runs which allow you to alternate uh, between uh, legato and uh, whatever you call it staccato type thing and without changing articulation and that is quite a biggie for a lot of people particularly yes you you hate changing articulations i know you i can i can see you i've got you i've got you yeah um so anyway um I'll give you a little playthrough of this. If this is the kind of thing you enjoy, feel free to subscribe. I don't mind. It is complete. We're having a special offer at the moment. You can subscribe to the channel without paying me anything. It's always free, of course it is. And if you really, really, really like this stuff, it has been known, we have been known to sell the odd course. Now look, you have to say, look, there's, there's quite a lot of people out there selling stuff. Oh, it's, you, yeah, I got you. It's going to be great. Now, so we... If we're going to sell you stuff, it's going to be in a very gentle way, like that. Anyway, <sighs> calm down, guy. Right, here we go. Uh, this is the BBC Symphony Orchestra, Pro and Core Edition. I'm using Pro, but I haven't done anything here you couldn't have done in Core. Uh, free update. Enjoy. Enjoy.